James Jones, the GM, came out and said, I've never seen this behavior. Monty Williams said, if you know me, I wouldn't be here. I've never seen this behavior. Chris Paul has given no indication, nor Devin Booker, that they've seen that behavior. And on top of it all, somebody that is a champion that has been around, that, to be quite honest with you, is one of the nicest people most of us have met in this business, Brian Wintour's, Coach Steve Kerr of the Golden State Warriors was the former GM of the Phoenix Suns. He said he was shocked to hear this because in his years of being with the organization, he never saw anything like that. I don't know about anybody else, but Steve Kerr's words matter to me. And so when I look at it from that perspective, and then I couple that with the absence of video or audio showing and displaying this kind of behavior, is, a warrant, is an investigation warranted? Absolutely. Does some kind of reprimand needs to come down? Absolutely. Does he need to fall back and somebody else needs to be at least the face of this organization in a public stratosphere so you don't have to, you can, you can deal with him in another way? Sure. But when people talk about confiscation of ownership of a franchise where other owners who are not black outside of Michael Jordan in the NBA, by the way, okay, these other owners are supposed to vote him out and not want him to be a part of their ownership click, the Board of Governors, and all of that other stuff. I hate to say it to people, but you need more evidence than that to do something like that. You can't be and conjectured. What he's saying, he's yeah. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is essentially what Monty Williams and, and Chris Paul and Devin Booker said. You, you're, you're, you're right alongside them. Um, but I will say this, something that I was surprised about. I asked Monty Williams, I said, when you took this job three years ago, you had other options. The Los Angeles Lakers were sitting there uh, saying, you know, come here with LeBron James, you know, and he took the son's job. And I said, how much did ownership influence your decision? You know, because ownership in a lot of cases is one of the most important things in the NBA. And he said it influenced it a lot that his that his, you know, not only did he stand back from, you know, condemning and basically said he said he said with Robert Sarver, he said that. He came to Phoenix in part because of Robert Sarver and that his relationship with him and the way he's uh, worked with him these last two plus mm -hmm. seasons has been why well, he's they've been successful here. Let me tell you this. Let us not escape what Earl Watson said about Sarver giving him 10 days to make a decision about dropping clutch sports and Rich Paul. Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. He had no business doing that. Mm -hmm. If there's any truth to that, that's a very egregious thing for him to do on his part. You have people talking about how difficult he is. I personally, as I know you have, Wendy, have spoken to numerous agents that consider him a problem at times because rather than leave the executives to, you know, the GM, James Jones, and others to negotiate deals, he steps in and tries to do it Absolutely. himself, even though he scaled back yeah. on that a little bit. In the end, ladies and gentlemen, all of those things are egregious. It calls for a guy, it, 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 it shines a light on a guy in terms of his personality, the kind of person he is, the kind of person you want to be associated with or may not want to be, all of those things is true. It does not amount to you saying you can no longer own your team. That is a huge, huge step to take. And in order for the NBA to do that, you got to have more evidence that has been presented because well, he has denied a whole bunch of that stuff. You better be able to prove it. You better be able to prove it. You better be able to prove it. Wendy, we do need to let you go, but back to the, our earlier conversation really quickly. Uh, yes, I punted I thought was a little bit strong, but I do agree with you from this fact. I think they absolutely, in a perfect world, you're right, if he's going to disseminate the message and the players are going to be in lockstep, they should have condemned the behavior, if true, 100% before saying, let's just get the facts and, and playing it safe. You are 100% right in that. Uh, we will let you go, Wendy. Yeah, and, they, yeah. Oh, go all ahead. All right, go have ahead. a good weekend. No, no, no. You give, give us your have final word weekend. here. Okay. I would just say that it's a tough situation because Earl Watson mm -hmm. is a guy who Devin Booker really likes and admires. And he was put in a tough position here to choose between something he doesn't know and a man that he really respects. And I could sense his difficulty in handling this. And that is one of the reasons why I think those guys didn't go that route because they were, they no. were, they felt like they were in a box and they mm -hmm. were like, look, we're just going to try to play basketball. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.